I hope you've seen off now. Then other things we you are we are live on four four oh eight parliamentary channel TV. So whenever you have to speak, you need to put your micro my your camera on so that the TV can be able to recognize you. Let me welcome your honorable acting premier MC Mawate. We we know that the premier is ill disposed. Then and then also let me welcome accompanied you by the DG Upo. Also to welcome the MEC for Copta. MEC Nintendeni, mm -hmm. TV can be able and to the MEC for Public Works and Let Living Settlement, MEC Oloi, also to welcome the MEC Mwate, and mm -hmm. uh, also the MEC, mm -hmm. the delegations mm -hmm. that are uh, accompanying you to the Public Works and Living Settlement, and just to welcome the MEC also to welcome the MEC and the MEC Acknowledged you. I started with you, Honorable Mkalipi. I know you are here. 
Uh, I think then we need to start this meeting. As I've pleaded with all of you, when you are recognized by the chair, uh, Becky, mute your microphone, please. Thank you. Chair, I, 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 Honorable Chair? Uh, yes. No, uh, uh, my apologies. I, mm. I just wanted to raise something that is becoming a trend, and it's, 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 it's the serious issue of concern on my side. What is that? It? Ever since we have started, Chair, it's only the Premier of Western Cape that managed to, to be present. Uh, uh, because it comes from where you come from. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's the trend that we're going to see going forward. I just want it to be noted as a matter of concern, Chair. Okay, your concern is noted. But you recall, we're going to have follow-up meetings with all these premiers. The mere fact that they didn't appear before us, so we'll see if they will still. But in this case, this one, there is an apology and the evidence to that effect that MEC Kawate has been shown in. As act she's not acting for a day, like what you've seen with others. She's acting because the premier is sick. She has even been shown in. She's not standing in for a premier, like what we've seen in other instances. She's an acting premier based on the fact that the premier cannot execute her responsibility due to her evil. So, but that is noted because others indeed we got them apology without any actual explanation. You have got a valid and good point to that effect. Yes, and then when we invited the Premier of the Western Cape, he never hesitated, he came and still commit to come back again. So the concern is genuine and is noted. And uh, like what we also experienced during the day, uh, Premier Kavate, the Mayor of Maluti Apufong was absent without any valid explanation. So as a trend, like Honorable Hadewe is saying, we're observing a trend where they are running away. They don't want to come and account to the committee. That is a matter for another day. And we are meeting today, colleagues, and taking you back the memory line you may all recall that the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in Free State was a church gathering in Mangao, Lofontein, which took place over, over four days early in, in March. In attendance were five COVID-infected visitors from abroad who passed the virus to several attendees, including our own fellow members of parliament. It is here that we learned for the first time that the church gatherings are potential key clusters for COVID-19 infections. This became the rationale for the subsequent regulations to limit the church and other social gatherings to no more than 50 people. It is re remarkable that early April, it became possible to raise 1,600 of the 1,700 people that had been in contact with the 859 people who attended the massive church gathering. A decisive move to act quickly in the first state Witness national mobilization of resources to the area for a large scale testing, tracing, and quarantine. This is how the Free State became one of the success stories of the early days of the pandemic. The, the province appears to have sustained these gains. As the report to the committee, it indicates that out of the 20,896 identified close contacts, only eight are untraceable. The rest we have managed to trace them. However, as the committee, we have the view that uh, you could do better to improve the recovery rate of 
which is low by comparison to the national recovery rate of 82%. This is also extremely low occupation. This th There is also extremely low occupation of quarantine sites across the province, the exception being Karib district. 101 of the 105 beds in Fezile Gavi are empty. Only eight of the Legenda, which was 195 beds, have warm beds. So in Legenda, which was, uh, out of the 195 beds, uh, you only have uh, eight. Yet this is the district with the highest number of COVID-19 related beds due to mining activities taking place in the area. Kabu Mufutuanyana and Mangao are slightly busier with the district having 36 out of the 271 beds occupied and the metro using 47 out of the 210 available beds. The province must assist us to understand the factors driving this trend. We are also interested in the capacity of the province to implement the regulations relating to interprovincial and international travel during the current and previous levels of the lockdown. In your report, you cite a challenge the three states specific provinces with high COVID-19 prevalence, as well as neighboring counties. By neighboring counties, you are perhaps referring to the challenges around policing of the province border uh, with Lesotho. Finally, given the heightened sensitivity around COVID-19 requirements, the province will also do well to go into more detail on its PPE expenditure in terms of the list of suppliers that benefited from the PPE contracts. From your report, we can only see the amount spent per district and the amount spent by each provincial department. There is no indication as to which companies benefited from these tenders and whether these were all above board. So as we are going to interact with you now, Premier Gawati, we look forward to your good selves to take us into your confidence on these matters. With these few words, I'll hand over to you. Uh, Look, with these few words, that thing is starting again, and I'm trying to check who this person was doing this now. I'm going to get the person not so long, don't worry. So I'll hand over to you, uh, Premier Kawati. Uh, you'll decide whether you want to do the whole presentation, or you delegate some of your colleagues, including the DG and the, the HOD that are present. Then I'm going to give you 20 minutes. 20 minutes is for the whole presentation. And you must know that the presentation has been read by members. We want to appreciate you that you submitted it within the prescribed period of the 24 hours submission requirement. So I'll hand over to you, MEC, acting premier. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. May I face Mutambi. Uh, greetings to you and all members of uh, the committee uh, this evening. Uh, Chair, I won't deal with um, um, introductions of uh, the team because I believe that you have already done that. You have given us 20 minutes. It's very uh, little in terms of <laughs> the report that you are holding, so I will rush uh, into uh, the issues. Chair, when we received uh, an in invitation to appear before the committee, we appreciated the call and the invitation. Uh, because we acknowledge and appreciate that you are here at this hour, uh, still on duty, in patience of good governance, 
uh, as you are doing oversight and also uh, in the best interest of best service delivery to to our people. So we we do appreciate uh, that we be called here. Chair, when we got uh, uh, the presentation, you there was also an indication to us which department are invited and which issues to focus on. So we have prepared a composite uh, report uh, that would be responding to the issues that we were asked to give as information. Uh, the DG of the province, Ntateko Pundradi Konzani, will present uh, the report, but uh, we are here as a team that where questions are being asked, uh, where clarities are being sought, that we be able to uh, respond as a collective to, to the report, Chair. And yes, of the issues that you have raised, the free state over and above being uh, bordering with Lesotho, we are also the center of the country. And that challenges because all the provinces, as they uh, travel around, they pass through the free state and they leave us with uh, challenges. But I'm handing over to the DG to present the report, Chair. Thank you very much. DG? DG? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the chairperson. Can I you should I flout the the, the the presentation, or yes, you just want us to? Yes, to show your face as they are busy flouting the presentation. Show your face, DG. Um, my face is there, Chair. Are you able to see me now? Colleagues, can you see the DG? Okay. okay. No, Chair, we can't see him. Chair, we can't see him. We don't see him. <laughs> don't see him when he's <laughs> Are you able to see me? My camera is on. No, we don't see you. Presentation. There's a demand yeah. for you to be seen by members. I want you? him. We want him, Chair. Am I too dark, Chair, that I cannot be recognized? <laughs> Present. Maybe. When we finish, you'll switch on your camera again. You My camera is on and I'm showing the hand, Chair. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chairperson. I have tried to um, put the presentation on the uh, on the slide. I, uh, I want just to confirm with you that you are able to see our presentation. Yes. Yes, the presentation we can see, all of us, we can see your presentation. Okay, they are sharing it from their side, Chairperson. Uh, can I get the next slide? Okay. We, we indicate that uh, uh, you will see our presentation. You have indicated that members have gone through that. Our presentation is based on the six key strategic thrusts. The inclusive health response, provision of food and shelter, provision of water and sanitation and enforcement compliance measures, the economic recovery plan, the governance recovery plan, and we are concluding, Chair. Um, we uh, indicate, Chairperson, that uh, we, as the provincial government, have embarked on this so that we are able to deal with the surge and uh, our surge has come in uh, uh, July now and August. You would see as we deal with our numbers here, Chairperson, that we were at a very lower level earlier on, but uh, the situation was that in July we got a very big surge. Can we move on? Uh, already you have given this background, Chairperson. I'm not going to stay long on it. Can we move on? If I've already indicated the, the six trust, Chairperson, can we move on? Yes, let's move on to the next, next slide, please. Chair, we are indicating here the uh, structures that we have established, which are what you are really aware of, the uh, Command Council chaired by our Premier, uh, with Salga and the uh, mayors as part of that, and also the, the our MECs, uh, the House of Traditional Leaders is represented by its chairperson there as well. The command center is chaired by the director general with all national and provincial departments represented by the heads. 
and uh, co-chaired by Health and COCTA. Then we've got Prof. Jok, which is chaired by the DDG COCTA, and there are those co-chairs there, Chairperson. Structures are duplicated at our district level, and uh, they say also the, the, stri the structure that are chaired by the municipal managers at that level with representation of all our departments. Chair, we have consolidated in our program of uh, the Command Council, the national employees who already found our provincial employees doing work in districts, uh, the champions, uh, working with the mayors as uh, reflected on our slide, uh, Chairperson. Can I move on? Next slide, please. So, Chair, I think what is critical for our purpose is the flow of information. All reports uh, from local and district structures are processed by the Provincial uh, Command Center, which I chaired en route to PCC. And uh, uh, we are uh, ensuring that uh, the meetings of the Command Council meet as regularly as possible. During the first two months, it was uh, on a weekly basis. Now, subsequently, the meetings are held bi-weekly, both at district and uh, at provincial level. The center and other operational structures meet three times a week, Chairperson, to, to deal with pro pro processes. We have faith-based organizations represented. Business and mining are at our district jobs, and also institutions of higher learning are part of our, our own processes at this level. Chair, I would want uh, HOD uh, Health to immediately deal with our health approach. I'll give him that opportunity and then I'll deal with all other threats from here. And I, will, uh, I think he will in five minutes just deal with that part. We don't have time. HOD, uh, Dr. Mdau. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, for the opportunity uh, I have. Uh, Avail myself on the screen there. If the chair allows, I will yeah. then uh, so switch off my camera. Just yes. Yeah, yes, uh, I am. You, Dr. Every, unlike the DG, yeah. everybody can see you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, if chair allows, I will then uh, switch off my camera just to maximize on the bandwidth. Okay. You can do that. Thank so, you very much, Chair. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, DG. In terms of what the DG has already uh, presented, uh, Chairperson, uh, you'd remember, as we have correctly indicated, that our first case was around the 16th of March 2020, uh, and we've since progressed to about 34,136. And in terms of recoveries, which is a concern to you, Chair, and all the honorable members, uh, is that we are sitting at 60%. Uh, recoveries, uh, and out of that, we have uh, about uh, 582 deaths at, at uh, uh, the 22nd of August 2020. Uh, we, we've established a command center, which is run by myself uh, at the DDG. We've had to remodel the structure of the department to make sure that we adequately respond to uh, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, as, as, as it were. And we therefore had to come up with uh, different streams, one of which was the clinical stream, the human resource, logistic support services, emergency services, forensic services. And of course, this we did with uh, uh, all our partners. Uh, we hold meetings on a daily basis, which are chaired by either myself or the, the chair, um, the, 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 the DDG. Now, in terms of the approach, we have uh, since established four pillars, Chairperson, that uh, is based mainly on evidence-driven uh, sort of uh, work uh, strategies and implementation, uh, as well as data management, and of course, the organizational structure. I will not go into that, uh, Chairperson. Uh, can we go to the next slide? DG, uh, can, next slide, please. Uh, there seems to be a delay, Jefferson. All right. Now, in terms of the uh, 
the, the, the overall strategic response, uh, the, the, the main aim of the department was to hold the transmission of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 in the free state to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the health and well-being of the citizens of the province. Now, in that, we had to make sure that we strengthen the health sector coordination and governance for COVID uh, uh, response in the free state, strengthen health information and surveillance system. And I must emphasize, Chair, that it was through this uh, health information system that we were able to do most of the things. But of course, we also had to ensure health systems readiness against the epidemiologic curve, including enhanced capacity of facilities to mount effective uh, COVID response. Next slide, please. So um, in terms of what, what I've just indicated, um, we also then had to engage effectively the community and communicate the public health risk of COVID, establish and configure clear continuum of care pathways for COVID-19 response. But also it was important for us to scale up infection prevention control mechanisms uh, as per the national guidelines uh, and then enhance screening capacity uh, at key ports uh, of entry and augment the environmental health uh, uh, chairperson. Uh, the departmental intersectoral uh, um, collaboration was also quite key. Now, the next slide is just to indicate to the chair and the honorable members in terms of where we are. And this is actually delineating the number of cases per district. You'll see that on the slide, we have uh, um, confirmed cases of about 84,621. That is uh, just two, three days ago. And uh, we have deaths that are amounting to 596. And the recoveries, as you've already alluded to, at 20,000 chairperson. Now we have uh, new cases uh, of about 485. And uh, Mangaung is carrying the biggest burden in terms of this uh, new cases, sitting at 229. Uh, followed by uh, Lijueli Putwa at 110, and the next one was Tabum Putanyani, and then uh, Fezle Dabi, and lastly Harib, uh, as it were. Uh, this, uh, the next bullet points I've already spoken to, we can move to the next slide. Next slide, please. Chairperson, this is just a demonstration of our EPICAV in terms of uh, your districts. Now, I'd like to just uh, in few minutes, uh, seconds rather, uh, take us through this uh, epic F as you can see there. Jefferson, the, as the DG was saying, we believe that our, our search was around the, the month of July going into August. You'd, you'd notice that as at the end of June, beginning of July, we're sitting at just around 2,000 cases. And we then shot up, uh, you know, within from from about the, the 10th, uh, within the week of the 20th to the 26th, we are actually, um, you know, already around the 30,000 uh, mark. And we've started now seeing in the month of August our cases uh, coming down. Uh, but this is against uh, really what the models were saying. Uh, but if you look at the distribution of deaths in the province, you'd realize that the Jolly Putso is leading at 207. Uh, followed by uh, Tabum Putanyani and then Fedliet Abi. And I must also emphasize uh, that literally put with their number of deaths, they are actually having a case fatality rate of about 2.5%, which is quite high. Uh, but overall in the province, we have a, a case fatality rate of 1.7. 1, 1. Uh, the next slide is in terms of the contract tracing, where the chairperson was uh, correct uh, and spot on uh, at the beginning. And I must indicate, chairperson, that this was the strength of the province of the free state. You know, when the first case was first, uh, you know, identified in the province, uh, our strength was in terms of contact tracing and also testing of uh, uh, those cases. So this slide is just depicting us at the 22nd of uh, August as to where we, we were in terms of that. Um, the next slide is in terms of the lab test. Here we are comparing all the provinces uh, in the country as to the number of tests that have been be, been able to be conducted both in public and private by provinces. And you'd see that uh, on your, the second uh, line, there is a free state where we are indicating that we have, we have tested up to so far 220,333 uh, tests that have been performed. And the percentage thereof is about 6%. 
but we remain the highest in terms of uh, uh, the percentage test positive. So we have been testing uh, chairperson, uh, despite the fact that our numbers are going down. And I must indicate that the strategies now have uh, been uh, changed uh, by NHLS, where we'll now start uh, focusing more on certain sectors and certain areas. The next uh, slide is the, the innovation of the department. We call it BOMIS. It's a, a system that we developed in-house uh, it's called the Bupilo Outbreak Management Information System. Now, this system is basically a system that is going to live beyond the life of the COVID-19 in that any outbreak that will happen, we will be able then to capture this, um, this cases onto this system. But we have uh, uh, included uh, the uh, what we call Go Data. It's a system that was introduced to us by the WHO. Now, the next slide here is just uh, in terms of how once we've tested, a person has tested positive from either the private lab or the national laboratory system uh, uh, in terms of how the, the flow is going to go up until we close the case. And we use uh, these systems uh, together to make sure that we close the cases uh, finally. Next slide, please, uh, Chairperson. Now, in terms of the Go data, which is the system that actually tells you about the admissions of uh, patients in, in, in hospitals, uh, we have implemented this system across all the districts in the province, and there uh, is somewhere where we still need to, to um, you know, conduct training with, uh, in as far as your district response teams uh, are concerned. But overall, we are now happy that we can actually report in terms of the bed utilization uh, both at uh, the hospitals as well as uh, our quarantines. And I've noted the question that you've asked, uh, Chairperson, and I'm sure at some point we will deliberate on that. Now, in terms of the mortality surveillance, and please, uh, whoever is uh, moving the slides, if you can just pause a little bit here because I want to really go to town on this one. The mortality surveillance process is a process that we introduced in the department during the early days of COVID-19 where we said uh, we need to deal with this COVID from cradle to grave. Uh, in other words, we then decided that even those people that would have died as a result of cardiorespiratory illnesses, we need to swap them. In other words, we need to take tests from them and uh, go and conduct those tests at the lab. Uh, that is going to help us uh, in terms of now going backwards to track those people that would have been related to the person who demised and in that way, we are able to then follow all those people and we are able to uh, limit the spread of infection. So it was one innovation that the Free State was able to come up with. We issued a circular from my office around the 24th of August. Uh, and uh, we are happy to announce that uh, even the minister now at the National Department of Health has now uh, given an instruction that we need to do this swabbing. So basically, this is what is happening, and we are also now helping other provinces as to how uh, this needs to be done. Can we move to the next slide, please? Now, of course, it, we, we would not have, have gone through this chairperson without any challenges. And here we, we really are trying to demonstrate in terms of what the challenges would have been, uh, some of which would also address some of the questions that uh, the chairperson would have asked. But I must say that uh, working in collaboration with the command uh, center uh, uh, of, of chaired by the DG, we are able to work together as uh, departments to deal with these issues. Just quickly to rattle through the, some of the challenges. Uh, one of the biggest challenges would have been the logistics and safety of healthcare workers conducting screening in the community. And I think uh, at some point you will see that our number of healthcare workers that have been infected with the COVID-19 uh, has actually increased quite a bit, uh, especially in our facilities. Uh, the COVID-19 itself has placed an additional... Um, Chairperson, am I audible? You are. Yes. Yeah. Proceed. 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 Okay. Thank, thank you very much. I just uh, got a call from the DG. I don't know what was happening, but I'm sure. The DG, uh, the DG shouldn't disrupt you from this meeting. Eh? All right. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, I'm sure you heard the chairperson. Now, the second part, uh, chairperson, that mm -hmm. has always been a problem and a challenge for the 
for the free state. COVID-19 came into a system that was already overburdened. Now, uh, we then found ourselves in a situation where we got burdened even more. Uh, and of course, we needed to then uh, put heads together and make sure that we reprioritize uh, and repurpose some of the healthcare services. But we were quite resolute person in terms of what we needed. We knew very well that beyond COVID, we, we should remain with a strengthened health, uh, health system that is going to make sure that uh, beyond this, we are able to provide health care for our people, but also to make sure that uh, in terms of the NHI, we are better positioned to can uh, deal with that. Uh, but one of the biggest challenges, of course, as I said earlier, was that some of our healthcare workers were infected and that led to closure of facilities. Uh, we also had uh, one of the biggest challenges, which was the cluster-based infections, such as those uh, at churches, funerals, workplace, and schools. Well, uh, the increase in the number of new cases in the province. Of course, the testing capacity, as it has always been said, was a problem. Can we move to the next slide, please? Now, here, Chair, um, we are demonstrating in terms of the, the, the number of quarantine sites uh, in the province and the, the bed occupancy in that regard. And maybe I can then take an opportunity here to also uh, try and respond to the question as to why uh, uh, are this, some of these districts' uh, bed occupancy so low. Now, Chairperson, um, what will then happen here is that we will quarantine those uh, uh, individuals that are unable to quarantine themselves. That is the first part. But the second part is that you would also have then some of those that would have tested positive that would be in hospital. If you look at the next slide where we are demonstrating in terms of occupancy of our hospitals, you then realize that both in public and, 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 pub and private, we have a total of about 571 beds that are being uh, occupied. But you also have uh, the, the biggest challenge which we, which we are trying to address in terms of stigmatization that uh, this COVID-19 has come up with. Um, in fact, you'd find that people do hide themselves now because they don't want to be labeled as, 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 as COVID-19. Uh, just to give you an example, um, the other day somebody was asking another person, where do you stay? And this person said, no, no, I'm staying at that house. And then the response was, oh, next to the COVID, you know. So, so this is to which uh, this uh, stigmatization is going to create problems for us. But we're already uh, developing strategies as to how we're going to deal with that. Next slide, please. This slide is just demonstrating uh, the number of healthcare workers that is a worry to us. Uh, a total of 2,665, both in public and private, uh, chairperson have, have been infected. And uh, the bar graphs there are just showing in terms of the number of, uh, I mean, the number per district. Uh, Mangawing is uh, very high there, as you can see, followed by Tabum Putsanyan, Nijueli Putsua, and then Pesle Dabi, and, and that. Now, uh, in terms of the recover, the recoveries thereof, we are quite happy that uh, most of them have recovered the uh, chairperson. And the number of deaths, of course, have been indicated there. Chairperson, I think I'll stop here. Uh, and allow the DG to continue. Thank you very much for the opportunity. HOD, I also called the superintendent, general. No, no, we don't have that uh, luxury chairperson of being called the SGs. I'm still the HO. Yeah, but it's still the HOD. Because yeah. the, at that time, uh, Honorable Mkalipi met the SG from Eastern Cape. So we wanted to understand that they are also called the SG. <laughs> yes, no, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still humbly called the HOD. Uh, the HOD. <laughs> and then I tell you, thank you. Over to you, DG. Thank you, Chair. We, we've uh, given you information from also the um, uh, Department of Correctional Services is a containment area. Which we are basically worried about. We've given you. We can see you now, DG. Can all see you now. Can you see <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Uh, so uh, that's that you are aware of from both screening inmates and also the officials. Next slide, please. Yes, we can pass this. Uh, the correctional services. Can we move? I think the uh, chair, the, those challenges we have highlighted, 
and the HOD has referred to them. We we are trying our level best in containing and dealing with these challenges, and we will indicate uh, some various interventions uh, that we have uh, uh, come up with in trying to deal with uh, these uh, issues of neighboring countries and including the mining areas and our interaction with mines on an ongoing basis. Next slide, please. Then we're looking at some uh, lessons learned from our interventions. Uh, Chair, we've been uh, trying our level best to ensure that we control in the province uh, the mass gatherings, which have created a lot of problems for us, uh, and issues around essential industries, which had opened now, and obviously for mint clusters themselves. Uh, I think those issues, the uh, HOD in general has referred to them. Can I move on? Uh, uh, I'm also indicating that there has been a rapid response in aggressively investigating our cases. Uh, this helped us a lot to contain this until uh, around July when we now had uh, community transmissions or community infections that were taking place, uh, Chairperson. Can we move on? Let me move on first. Uh, we have uh, to date issued about 6,500 food parcels in the province. Uh, in, with a lot of partnerships, we're indicating our partners there, also uh, from our SASA, and but also from the provincial uh, government, uh, Chairperson, across our districts. There are also shelters for the homeless individuals. We started with 332. Uh, in our various district chairperson, you will see now the number we have is 164. A number of them have been uh, uh, reunited with their families. Others who were from Lesotho and so on were deported and, and so on. So that, that, that part was dealt with. We requested to deal with grants. We in the old age grants over uh, uh, one uh, million uh, grant recipients with 896 million uh, per month. We can move on. Uh, we are also indicating the beneficiaries per district. We can move on. Uh, the uh, social relief of distress, food, food parcel distributions, these were done with uh, SASA, and uh, we've also indicated that figure of 10,978 in our overall 6,000. One area that is critical has been the 350 unemployment grant. Uh, Chairperson, you will see that uh, we have 296 that were approved in our province with 98,000 uh, females and uh, 198,000 uh, males. And uh, uh, with about 75,000 of our applications having been approved. Uh, Chairperson, we can move on. The, we've also highlighted that during this period, we have also been monitoring gender-based violence uh, we, in our centers, Chairperson, and we can move to the next slide to indicate the work that has been happening there from April to June, where we were giving services in our shelters because movement was highly restricted. Most cases uh, during uh, July to August were then placed where domestic violence and sexual violence and uh, counseling services also took place. And uh, in August, also a lot of uh, counseling of cases that were emerging. Chair, we've indicated also our engagement with uh, traditional leaders with the work that they do. They've, we've collaborated with them in food parcels and PPEs. They are actually part of us because they are said in the command, they sit in the command council. And they were very critical, especially in rural communities on funerals and cultural activities, including working with us in terms of ensuring that we suspend initiation schools. The third strategic thrust is about provision of water and social distancing chair. Our Department of Human Settlement and the National Department of Water and Sanitation uh, had to ensure that we are, uh, there's access to water by our priority informal settlement, and also to fast track uh, upgrading of some of in, in, informal settlement to aid social distancing and provision of uh, 
uh, hygiene products in those poor households in the informal settlement. And uh, in, in Caleb Motsavi, which was our priority in Mangaung, uh, we had to ensure that we are able to provide uh, resources there. Access to water, Chairperson, uh, the, this includes uh, the work that we did with the water and sanitation in our various informal settlement and where the water was not available, including in, in the area of Kwakwa, 2,622 uh, 2, water uh, tanks were procured and uh, 1,191 were delivered across the province. We indicate, including 118 trucks working with Rand Water and City Bank. We include in the, we show in the next slide uh, how we were able to distribute those uh, 1,991 across our province. Some have now been permanently installed, and the water trucks, 118 of them, are uh, assisting chairperson as we try to get a permanent solution. We are showing Jefferson here up to day 151 that we had about 37,966 uh, arrests. Uh, you will see that met in the metro uh, on various violations, 11,578. Most of these cases, Chair, did not appear in court. Uh, these were basically fines in most instances, arrests and fines. Uh, I think we only had to about 1,339 cases that appeared in court. Basically, we are indicating that uh, the province has been stable in terms of uh, 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 the lockdown regulations, and uh, we work very closely with our law enforcement agency within our prof job. And we've come, we also came with a strategy of dealing with food parcels to limit uh, instability and chaos that we are seeing in the in terms of people trying to access uh, food parcels. And we are also monitoring the uh, illegal crossing of uh, our uh, borders. The Economic Recovery Initiative Chair would have included what, is, what was happening national. We demonstrate how the free state was able to access uh, about 143 of our applicants were approved uh, the NYDA also approved uh, 65. The CIFA and the small business, they were able to uh, uh, give us 10 million for spaza soap support. And also uh, uh, we are indicating some of the, the other areas that happened. We, do, we created our own provincial incentive, Chairperson. Uh, around spaza shop, around informal business, around enterprise support and risk sharing. We are showing applications that have been approved in our various districts uh, uh, and also the estimated jobs. You will see that, uh, that we demonstrated that there. We also created our own relief in the province. Uh, uh, an amount of 3 million was disbursed on, feder on federations at least and the MPOs. Uh, we can move on. Next slide, please. Also, uh, relief funding for arts and uh, uh, culture artists and for 4IR processes, 4.5 million. This is provincial initiatives, Chairperson, where we're uh, coming up with some interventions. We show here, Chairperson, the expenditure of the 396 million. And uh, the Chair has indicated we, we will provide to the Secretariat the spreadsheet of companies because we we, we were able to uh, indicate that uh, uh, all companies and we we advertised uh, actually we, we we put the companies on our uh, uh, um, um, websites and published in the newspapers as well of the 396 million that that has been spent you'll see that provincial treasury uh, has the highest spend in the sense that the province had taken a decision that uh, provincial treasury will uh, procure PPE on behalf of all departments. We can move on. Next slide, please. We are showing that expenditure per district in our province. We have tried to ensure that uh, uh, our uh, um, 
companies in various districts are able to uh, uh, benefit from the PPE expenditure. You will see that Mangaung has got the highest expenditures. We show also about the designated groups, uh, black owned companies, youth owned, uh, military veterans, women, and uh, the disabled, uh, which is a figure that uh, is, was, is very low, and quite insignificant from a percentage wise. We can move on. Uh, we ensure that, uh, as I indicated, provincial treasury uh, was able to uh, procure on our behalf of all departments. Uh, however, now we have started to decentralize to departments, Chairperson. Departments were also able to repurpose some of their grants. Uh, social development also had to employ new social workers uh, to, so that they could actually provide psychosocial support. And we, of course, we made money available for sports as our own uh, local processes. The return to school program, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, obviously schools reopened on the 3rd uh, of August after that short uh, closure. Um, the grade sevens reopened in our province on the 11th of August. Uh, we were able as uh, the province to phase in all the 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 uh, grade seven and twelve and grade six and eleven without major challenges, we are showing there the total learners that we are we have to uh, face in close to uh, uh, a, a significant number of uh, close to six hundred and eighty five thousand. Uh, the return to school initiatives we are showing how the third we have brought in grade twelve twenty nine thousand. Grade 7, 60,000. Grade 11 will be coming in on the 24th, uh, 43,000. And grade 6 will also be coming in on the 24th of August. Can we move? Uh, you will see that there are also a program set up for schools or special schools, chairperson, and schools of skills. Uh, we can move on. There are challenges for the sector, of course. Uh, we have to ensure that we get uh, uh, ad uh, uh, costs for additional cleaners and screeners. The sector had to appoint 2,241 cleaners and 2,241 screeners. This has put a lot of burden with 250 per month. Uh, they had to also, uh, uh, they were given permission to repurpose some of the national uh, 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 conditional grants to enable them to be able to deal with this situation. However, at the moment, the next uh, three months, we are looking as to whether we can't use the EPWP and also use uh, the CWP for intervention to reduce pressure on, on education. Schools were vandalized. Of course, this were uh, work in progress to deal with them. Uh, also, nutrition, around 20% of the learners pitched during this period, which created a lot of inconvenience because schools were preparing food, but collection was very limited. Um, obviously, social uh, uh, distancing in hostels is an issue, and some schools are starting to use bunker beds to try and deal with the situation. And uh, we have 1,676 approvals of teachers with comorbidities which has got a lot of impact on teaching and learning, Chairperson. We are also indicating the uh, uh, learners, teachers, and non-teaching staff, which have tested uh, positive in our uh, province, Chairperson. Uh, where that uh, 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 figure uh, does demonstrate that uh, there, there's, there's uh, infections that are taking place in our schools as well. The, the matter of school disruptions was attended to, of course, uh, other people were simply uh, getting out of hand to intervene. Of course, teach, uh, learner uh, organizations were addressed. But during the month of August, serious campaigns on public uh, quality learning and teaching are taking place to ensure that uh, we mobilize everybody now to come back to school at the appropriate uh, processes uh, or dates that we have determined. Uh, there's rotation model of grace so that we are able to deal with social uh, uh, distancing. And what is very critical for us as well is to 
ensure that uh, uh, the grade 12 and, and grade 10 to 12 are prepared sufficiently. And uh, of course, learners and teachers with communities have been provided with resource pets and tablets to ensure that we are able to deal with the situation. Cleaning and disinfecting of all our facilities uh, is, is taking place every day. Uh, and all schools have uh, COVID-19 files. And of course, adequate functional ablution facilities have been made available. And we continue to ensure that uh, there's a single entrance for learners and teachers so that they could be screened uh, every day. We can move on. The service providers have been appointed uh, to assist in terms of uh, facing in the learners, uh, uh, in terms of giving uh, the PPEs and the, the markers. We are already preparing also for the markers. Uh, 2,171 of them will be appointed uh, to ensure that we are able to deal with marking at an appropriate time. The department indicates here the timetable model chair uh, on a variety of schools. I won't uh, take time. Traditionally unchanged, uh, 110, 386 on daily rotation, 196 on weekly rotation, and 39 uh, platooning, and uh, 304 of them using uh, the hybrid model. We can move on. Of course, COCTA plays a critical role. That the, the, the MEC for COCTA is the deputy chair to premier in uh, the command council. And therefore, they are overall responsible for coordination of the Disaster Management Center. And uh, they have developed uh, working with SALGA standard operating procedures uh, around audit of municipal land for symmetries, monitoring of funerals, facing in of municipal employees, a report of COVID-19 cases, coordination of departmental war rooms. And they are working very hard with DBSA and MISA for interventions to ensure, especially on infrastructure. Of course, we are communicating, we have set up consistent messages. Messages have been uh, repeated with uh, 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 one message with many voices. And our command council uh, continues to engage communities on national and uh, community media platforms. And also with fake news happening in everywhere, including in our province, we've got uh, a team of monitors who are looking at this fake news and giving factual information to our communities. We continue to talk about the toolbox uh, or the toolkit of uh, social distancing, washing of hands, uh, putting on masks. Uh, that's our continuous message, Chairperson. We can move on. Of course, the uh, PCC has looked at us be building a resilient provincial government with a strong health uh, uh, system. Uh, and we, have, we continued, as the, uh, Dr. Mudawi indicated earlier on, as we deal with uh, COVID-19, we are preparing our facilities for universal health access. Also, we working, uh, uh, the PCC, uh, PCC worked on uh, having to maintain consistent water supply. We still have got challenges in Malutia Pofu, you might have had uh, uh, engagement with the municipality during the day. Uh, the, uh, the public health measures there also in uh, uh, the PCC has looked at and ensured that we are able to deal with overcrowding and provision of clean water. Of course, uh, education uh, to ensure that we try to see whether we can't use EPWP and some community works program uh, to offset budgetary pressures in terms of the people that we have appointed. Uh, we have to foster a, a better coordination in terms of the implementation of our budget between departments. And uh, of course, we have got a document now of the deep cleaning to ensure that our buildings or standard operating procedure, uh, which we have consulted with organized labor so that we don't con uh, close buildings from time to time and the issues of harmonizing gender-based violence and proper coordination uh, with justice, health, and the uh, office of the premier. And we, as we conclude, Chairperson, our task is to continue to ensure proper coordination of the provincial government departments, 
national departments that find offices in our province, our municipalities, and all stakeholders, so that we can also work on a strategy beyond COVID-19 to deal with poverty and employment inequality. And we are also working through this, uh, the district development model to ensure that we are able to create uh, and align our plans to create a one plan for the province, basically fitting into one plan for the country. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, DG. Thank you for the presentation. Yes. So you exceeded my time. You just extended your stay here tonight, DG. That is fine. Let's proceed, colleagues. Can I see who wants to interact with the province? Mkalipi, I can see you, Mkalipi. Who else? Lutuli. Lutuli. Opperman, I can see you. Who else? Kaiza. Who else? That's all. One, two, three, four. And Honorable Hadebe. You know the rule, what you must do. Show your face. Then I'll note you. Okay, let's proceed, Hadebe. Okay, can I hand over to you, Honorable Mkalipi, colleagues? Then I also remind you that... Remind you that you are still... We are still going to deal with uh, the section 139 presentation. I'm just trying to let you know. Let's deal with the COVID response matters, the intervention matters. The MS is still going to talk to us and we're going to proceed with that. But let's start with the COVID response. Okay. Kalip. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thanks for the province for the presentation. Okay, thanks, Chair. Please, uh, thanks for elaborating on the issues of Section 139 because I wanted to start there since we have a meeting in the morning. But let us wait for the presentation of Section 139. Let us engage with what has been presented to us. And I want, I just want to start with the presentation of the school because the I think is the HOD who is saying that everything is well. But yesterday, I think all of you colleagues you saw on TV, the former is, is F-U-N-A, is Fona Primary School in Mangawong. There was a sort of um, a toy toy outside the school, and um, it seems as if the matter is about 14 staff members fired after they have exposed corruption. If the Department of uh, Health can also uh, take us into confidence with what happened yesterday, because the picture that we saw yesterday, it was not a good picture when the, the reopening of the school was taking place. There is one. The second issue that I want to get a clarity on uh, is regards to health. Um, I was listening very attentively when the presentation was done to say that in terms of contact, you are able to make, to make sure that those who are infected with COVID but please take us into confidence. There's an issue of Jimmy Zodala uh, in Virginia. So this issue was also on radio. I'm not sure if it was HOD or if it was MEC who was debating this issue, whereby this member of a family uh, was questioning the Department of Health in terms of uh, as we treat all bodies as COVID-19. First of all, when the body was released from mortuary, it was not um, uh, covered in such a way that it's COVID. You know, you use plastics uh, in, in order to prevent COVID to, uh, to, 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 to go and infect other people. That was one thing. So when the MEC or the Department of Health, let me just say that, when the Department of Health was uh, saying that this body must be treated as COVID, the family take offense because you didn't follow the regulations yourself as the department in such a way that person, this issue went to a local radio and it was very, very, very clumsy. 
between the MEC or whoever was representing the department and the member of the society. So would you please uh, elaborate in this committee why that discussion is to take that shape that was taken on the radio, because it's live on the radio, to say that the MEC was, in a certain extent, tell this family that uh, some, some, some of the things that he was saying was not acceptable uh, as a member of the of the executive of I mean is it in leadership position. So the other uh, the other thing that I want to ask from the department, especially the leader of delegation here, in the absence of the premier, uh, she is not feeling well. Uh, we wish her speedy re recovery. But again, the head of delegation, there is an issue that has been. Uh, there in years and years, uh, the issue of asbestos uh, audit uh, that involves plus or minus 200 million that was missing. So if you can also update this committee with how far with that issue, because if you are saying that you are very, very serious in fighting corruption, we can't have an issue that involves corruption that is, is, that, is that remains unresolved. The second issue is about construction companies, mostly women-led companies uh, in free state, uh, such as Mapota Trading, Big Discount PTI LTD, and Guanaches BuildNet, who were contracted to build houses in the province as far back as 2010. We are in 2020. That is 10 years ago. And to date, there are still outstanding monies owed to them by the department. Uh, if we can get that clarity, Chairperson. There is an issue that I have with me. The head of delegation will also take this, channel this issue because it's a very serious issue. Uh, we are in uh, Women's Month, whereby we in South Africa, we are faced with the challenge of GPV. There's a case that, uh, the case number is 124 stroke 12 of 2019, and the other one is 144 12 2019. So these two cases are from 2019. And then someone was raped and murdered in 2019. And even this, even today, this has not been resolved. And what is the province doing, especially to confront the issue of GPVs, whereby our women are killed, our women are raped, and as people are leading the province, this is not a good story to tell, whereby a person was raped and murdered in 2019, but it seems as if the province is not providing any anything in order for the family to get a, a, a closure in that regard. So for now, Chair, I uh, will just stop there, but before I stop the, stop the Chairperson, I don't know if when I was reading on newspapers, uh, it was in Free State whereby there's a list of people who benefited from these PPEs. Uh, our, our, all SCM processes were followed because there are companies that were other tenders uh, who do have a history of supplying such service and also have Kawash, Shisanyama on the list. So. When we saw that list on media, it was like, oh, what is happening here? Why people who are owning car wash, who are not on the database of having such experience, is not a kind of uh, those things that you are preventing of fraud? If the department or if the head of delegation can also elaborate on who benefited on PPEs in the free state, in all departments, I can't be saying specifically on health department, but I'm talking in generally because that list, if I if my memory saved me correctly, is from the free state. When is Shisanya like K K La K was on the list? So are we not uh, taking people for granted in terms of dealing with corruption? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Mkalipi. The next speaker on the line is Ndavizi Tarisubi. Ntuli. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I, uh, to the delegation, I got only, I think I got two questions. Uh, it's, it's about the, 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 the relief fund where we where they they specified as if there are 784 uh, people who applied and then 360 they were rewarded and 400 424 which is uh, uh, declined. My question is, it's how did the, the provincial determine those applications that uh, merit to approval and those that did not? And those, pe those people who were declined, are they allowed to to appeal to the to the decision of the adjudicator committee, if they are allowed, where they can allow, uh, if they can't allow, uh, why not? And the and the second question is that uh, is pertaining about the schools. What is the, the, the financial of the schools vandalism in the province? Uh, what has been what has been what has been no, in the province? What has what has been the expenditure cost? Occurred in in the repair and the building of and the damaged schools infrastructure. I think, Chair, let me hold on on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Inkosi Lutuli. Uh, can I thank you so much, Inkosi Lutuli? Can you mute your microphone, please? Yes, thank you. Then can I hand over to Honorable Oberman? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, through you, Chair, to the head, to the leader of the delegation, your PPE tenders have also been on social media and in the news. So I'd like to know when will the audit on COVID-19 procurement be available? Because Treasury promised in the news that they will do an audit on COVID-19 procurement. Then I'd like to know what are the reasons behind the case, the high case fertility rate in Likwela Putswa, and also the most teachers were infected in Likwela Putswa. So what are the reasons behind that? And your Go data, I'm very impressed with that innovation. Did you train current staff as data capturers for GoData, or did you appoint new people? How much did it cost you? Who financed it? And will it go beyond COVID-19? And then you also appointed 92 social workers. Were they appointed permanently, or was it only for COVID-19 purposes? Thank you, Chair. Honorable Oberman. I want to recognize Honorable Keza. No? Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I have a few questions on COVID-19 uh, in terms of the province. Uh, uh, in Harry Smith, uh, there are seven, uh, 625 shacks that were built for detensification. Uh, which cost seven, seven, seventy-five thousand. So, if I make my calculations, and uh, uh, I, I get fifty million six hundred and twenty-five thousand, uh, how how possible is that calculation? 
uh, is that the money that you you spend on those sheds and what and what uh, uh, purpose for the expenditure uh, uh, was meant for what what what, uh, what 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 expenditure was 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 the expenditure worth it um, uh, secondly chairperson uh, there is a Ketuana, Ketuana local municipality. The CFO has been asked there as to how much was budgeted to fight to fight against the COVID the the, the, the COVID nineteen virus, uh, and how much uh, was spent thus far. There was there was there was no um, there was no answer coming from 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 her from him who. Who are the service providers appointed? For what services? How much was the tender? And what processes were followed to appoint each service provider? Uh, if the province can, or Cockstack or, or whoever in the province can, can answer me on that. The third question, Chairperson, relates to uh, uh, the in terms of. Uh, one one 147 informal settlements uh, being a cause for concern how much money was used from big events budget uh, to assist the people uh, in terms of gloves sanitizers and water uh, and water given to informal settlement dwellers uh, the money that was that was a uh, a uh, uh, Hold for for making big Hello, events. Professor. Yes. Yes, Chair. It's on silent. Uh, it's it's on silent, Chair. This phone. It's, it's not the phone. It's just that the phone is connected to whatever is happening here. Yeah. So whenever, oh. you know, it just makes that noise. Uh, I don't know. I I I I I I I yet to to train myself as to how to to silent the. Uh, the 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 laptop itself. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, and, and it is compelling, Chairperson, because I'm an artist. Uh, even mm. though I'm, I live being an artist. I'm a writer. Uh, mm. I still write and perform for with many artists. And mm. compelling for me to see that uh, uh, out of you, the the, the the province has declined 424. Uh, musicians uh, out of 784. Uh, that 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 gave me 360 musicians that were not artists, not musicians, artists. Because you can draw, you can you can sculpture, you can do any anything related to creativity. To be an artist, you don't have to be a musician. Uh, that gave me 360 uh, artists that were declined. On what basis did you do this? Uh, on what basis did you decline those that were declined? The 360 and, few, uh, and 60 that was that was declined. Uh, what will you do to to make sure that artists in your province are hired uh, with priority with prioritization of up and coming artists? Uh, and localization of 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 the the platforms. Uh, uh, apart from the fact that you you would have your radio your radio stations that are local, which is prevalent in any municipality, which are not useful anyway to play uh, South African music, which are not useful at times to 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 promote uh, the, the the history and 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 decolonization of education uh, in the country. Uh, 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 what measures are you going to put in place to make sure that particularly those 360 artists are, are, are regulated and are brought in the fall to uh, in your database as a province to actually uh, ensure that uh, they, they, they get the, the, the jobs within your pro province without having to go to, a, to migrate to, to join us back, which is already uh, full of 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 your middle pe people, uh, your agents that are that 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 are that are eating on 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 their car, on the on their trade. Uh, what measures are you going to put in place to ensure that uh, that that happens in your province? 
and then there is a vibrancy, apart from the fact that you are going to tell me about Makufe and all those things. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, that would, 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 would be enough because I don't think Makufe actually does, does uh, as a local uh, a, 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 a festival to actually do that. What are you going to do at this current moment uh, to ensure that uh, all those artists, uh, and on what basis did you decline them? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Kaiser. Thank you so much. The next speaker on the line is Honorable Hadebe with an H. Honorable Hadebe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you you, you, you requested me to show my face, Chair. Hmm. Yes, uh, um, I'm home finally. And let me take this opportunity, Honorable Chairperson, to welcome the presentation. And then even though I had initially raised issues and concern with the trend that we were seeing in terms of um, premiers not uh, being available, but I think it is uh, 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 appealing to see the delegation, the number of delegations. I have counted 16 and with not less than four MECs present, uh, Chair, uh, that indicates a province that is uh, taking issues of oversight and accountability serious, Chair. And having said that, Chair, I want to raise an issue or in a question of what has been uh, talked about in the media in relation to a perceived corruption in relation to procurement of either PPEs and other goods and services that relate to COVID-19. And I want to premise my question by reading what National Treasury issued as an instruction uh, number eight of 2019-2020, uh, with specific reference to re reporting requirement, which is uh, section 3.6 check. It reads as follows that all procurement in terms of uh, an emergency procurement related to COVID-19 must be reported to the relevant treasury within 30 days. The report uh, 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 to the relevant treasury must contain the following information, description of an item, meaning the goods and services that is procured, supplier's name, unit price, quantity, total price, savings achieved when compared to the price list on annexure A, meaning that there is an annexure, uh, a list of prices issued by National Treasury. Now, in an event that any goods or services that was procured, uh, the province uh, achieved savings, such savings must be reflected but if they deviated from such a motivation on deviation on the item needs to be forwarded. Now, we are on the fifth month, Chair, of the lockdown and the pandemic that has hit our country. The question that I would like to pose to the department, but first I must put it up front that not everything that is black is associated with corruption. And it is our quest, as we had resolved in our last conference, Chair, to advance the radical socioeconomic transformation. But in so doing, uh, our advancement of radical socioeconomic transformation must not be marred with corruption. I'd like to ask the, uh, the province whether or not they have submitted all procurement of goods and services to the relevant treasury within 30 days. And in their reporting, they have not uh, 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 come across uh, of a procurement of goods and services where there are questionable uh, 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 procurement and or inflated prices. Is everything that was procured uh, by the province of Free State above board and have they conducted the due diligence? I'm raising this question, Chair, 
because uh, the Free State Treasury is on record on media saying that there is nothing wrong in awarding contracts to politically connected individuals, as long as the company uh, uh, has followed the, uh, the criteria and they meet all the criteria in terms of uh, uh, supplying goods and services. Now, there's issue of procedural fairness and rationality, even if you're dealing with issue of an emergency. We understand that when dealing with emergency procurement, sometimes uh, the issue of competitiveness, the issue of fairness uh, uh, might not be 100% achieved. But what is key and critical is for us to ensure that there's procedural fairness, whether it's emergency or not. So the critical question that I'd like to get uh, 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 confirmation from the, the, uh, the province of Free State is that all your procurement that were done under COVID-19 as emergency procurement are above board. You should not wait for the uh, interministerial test team that was appointed to conduct its investigation to identify a, a, a fraud and corruption. By now, you would have been in a position to conduct your, your due diligence based on the outcry uh, uh, from the public that there has been perceived allegation of corruption, especially those that are politically exposed persons. And your provincial treasury is on record, like I said, saying there's nothing wrong in awarding tenders to people who have uh, uh, contacts with political uh, 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 persons within a, a state uh, uh, employee. So that's my question, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Honorable Director. Honorable Director. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is only one, Chair. I just want to check uh, what your is face. this. Please. Let's show your face. I know you come from the Free State. Show us your face. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is on the issue of the mining areas. Uh, I just want to check with the province that what is their strategy in dealing with COVID-19 on the mining areas? And then the second one, Chair, I think my colleagues have already asked about it. It's about the procurement uh, system. Uh, we don't want any surprises. We just want to check with them if they have complied with the uh, procurement, uh, uh, if they have complied with the supply chain uh, procedures when they were doing the procurement. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, can I also have a bite? Sorry. Sorry. You people, I'm going to send you, you know how you do it. I can see you. Honorable, yes, I can see you, the two of you. You can start with the fighter chains, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Very much, Honorable Khatewe and Chairperson. Uh, no, Chairperson, I, 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 I was afraid that I had left something on the issue of Harry Smith. Uh, the, the tender in that uh, process of provision of 625 checks uh, was provided uh, for, was provided to the son of the current Premier. So can they uh, clarify whether that uh, finding is, is is consistent or not? And 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 how did he, that, uh, the son of a, a political lead, uh, uh, secure uh, a tender? And and, and 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 whether that is a a a a, a, a proper process uh, to, to 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 follow? Thank you, Chairperson. I'll come back on another on other questions. Okay. Hi, David. Thanks, Chair. I, I wanted to also get an understanding in terms of the entire list that has been published and, 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 and supplied to National Treasury. Um, 
out of that list, how many SMMEs have benefited? Uh, I'm raising this question uh, based on what I've raised earlier on in pursuit of our radical socio-economic transformation, whether or not there has been a, a, a regard in, in, in that space of ensuring that uh, the SMMEs are, are beneficial. And also, if they can indicate um, in, in terms of the list, are there companies uh, that uh, are associated with what I call a politically exposed persons and whether or not they've conducted due, uh, due diligence in that aspect to ascertain that everything was done uh, above board. Uh, I'm raising this chair because earlier on, I attended a, a SCOPA portfolio committee. Uh, previously, we had a department of uh, public works, the issue of the Bay Bridge, uh, they appeared before us, uh, we raised questions, and they were very adamant with straight face to say uh, everything uh, in relation to that bridge was above board. And we raised pertinent questions, we demonstrated to them that to us it appears that the bridge was a predetermined uh, contract. And a few months later, yet today, this morning, we, we were proven right. So I'm cautioning uh, even the colleagues to say when they answer questions, they need to understand that they appear before parliament, whatever they say, it's under oath. They shouldn't follow uh, the same uh, a bad example that was displayed with the officials of the Department of Public Works. As we speak, uh, 14 of them are facing a, a disciplinary proceedings. So it's just a, a plead and, and a caution on their side, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Hadem. Uh, can I check with the colleagues from the first state? On the 6th of May, a total of 22 municipalities in the province are said to have been allocated money by the COP nationally the National Disaster Management Center, to the tune of 8.6 million. The funds was meant for PPEs, sanitation and hygiene, hygiene packs. Unfortunately, to date, no spending has been received by Compta nationally, leaving the province with a 0% spending. Can the MEC of Compta indicate how this situation will be remedied to ensure that also the National Department of Copter can be able to account to National Treasury and also to give us as the committee assurance that citizens are receiving the necessary services because this was money meant for disaster. If to date, uh, acting premier, the money is not yet spent. What, what does that mean? Where is this the money meant for the poor? The other issue that one wants to raise is with regard to the issue of the provincial disaster management plans. Uh, Section 39 of the Disaster Management Act provides that, as well as the provincial health disaster managing, management plan that is provided for in Section 38 of the Disaster Management Act. These plans are very crucial. Can we get an assurance whether these plans are in place? I want to hear that from both the COCTA MEC and the MEC for all. Are those plans in place? If not, when will they be developed for implementation in the face of climate change and increasing disaster occurrences? One will also want to know what is the capacity of your provincial disaster management center and whether it has a suitable building. I'm raising this because uh, when we started as this committee in May, in May um, 2019, we got a briefing on the state of the disaster in the entire country. If the building is not suitable, what is it being done to ensure that the center is placed in a suitable building 
to ensure its, effect its effectiveness and business continuity. In line with the COVID-19 response, provincial trust on water and sanitation, what is your plan to adapt to drought risk in the province for communities and farmers? And what are the resources allocated to ensure climate change adaptation and non resilience in disaster grants? The other thing that I want to know from you colleagues, what is the provincial hotspot approach to deal with COVID-19? especially taking into account the gradual opening of the economy. Oh no, now we are at level two. Then I want to also know whether all your municipalities provided for COVID-19 vigilance measures in their IDPs. We all know that municipalities while we were on the lockdown, they were busy with consultation and we were right in the mix of the COVID-19 disaster. That could have uh, then uh, caused the municipality to put vigilance uh, measures in the IDPs. And in so doing, did they budget? Also, given the protracted period of the existence of COVID-19, because moving forward, we don't want the situation we're in, then monies will be reprioritized. And then if that has been done, can you share the details with us in this regard? So I will pause you for now and allow you, Acting Premier and team, to respond to our questions as raised. Over to you, Acting Premier. No, uh, thank you uh, very much, Chair. Uh, let us uh, appreciate uh, all uh, the questions that uh, have been uh, asked uh, to us to respond to, uh, starting from uh, Honorable Member Mukalipi uh, until uh, the questions that were asked by Honorable Member uh, Mutambi. Uh, <laughs> Chair, had we been aware uh, that um, the scope of questions would not be uh, limited to the work of the department that are invited, but would extend to other departments, uh, would have um, uh, invited all of them because really some of the questions are expanding to some of the departments uh, that are not here, but we'll try by all means to give information as much as we can uh, on all the questions that are, are asked. Um, before I could give to uh, the DG and um, uh, the rest of the delegation to respond to the questions, I just want to respond uh, Chair, to this one of Nkosi uh, Lituli on SASA payouts, uh, the 315 rents that was that is being uh, uh, paid out. Uh, Chair, that is a national uh, program. Uh, the payouts are being done by SASA on behalf of uh, the Department of Social Development at national level. But because we are getting reports from SASA in the province of the work that they are doing, we felt that we should include that in our report because uh, it is the work that is happening in our province by SASA. But uh, for 35% of uh, the people that were rejected, I think uh, social development at national level uh, issued out a statement which was explaining that uh, there the, the was a lot of verification, yes, that verifications that they were doing against the applications. 
some were uh, disqualified because they were already getting other grants. You'll find that either the person is on UIF or is getting any other uh, grant anywhere. If they pick that up, they disqualify you. Others, you'll find that they did not give uh, full information. Uh, maybe when you punch your ID number, you have missed a number and all that. It kicks you out. So there were a variety of issues that they explained to why uh, the people uh, could not uh, comply to get the 350. But they also explained uh, in their statement that they are going back to those that did not comply because it's a it's a great uh, it's a much greater percent at, at national level. In the free state, it's 35, but at national level, it's a much higher uh, percent that they will go back to all those that were disqualified and cleanse and check whether uh, there are others that were supposed to get uh, the grant but were uh, disqualified. Uh, that's what uh, they they explained, uh, Chair. I was just saying maybe I should deal with that one because uh, um, it, 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 it falls on the portfolio that I am leading of a, a social uh, development. Um, much as I came as an acting uh, premier. On uh, the rest of others, Chair, uh, the departments are here. The DG uh, will guide uh, the departments to respond to the questions that were uh, posed to them. Let me appreciate, Chair, uh, that um, Honorable Member Becky Hadek has put this thing of a uh, corruption in a proper way to say it is a perceived uh, corruption. Uh, they will talk on it, but I just want to say, for, 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 for us to say a uh, treasury should buy for all other departments, it is only uh, the Department of Health as a frontline department and the Department of mm -hmm. Education as a frontline department that uh, were not part of uh, uh, being bought 